Hello everybody and welcome to this tutorial on the basics of Landscape Builder. Today I'm going to be showing you how to create a landscape for a game in less than 5 minutes using Landscape Builder. Along the way I'll be explaining the basics of how to use it and the general workflow you'll tend to use. So I'll get a timer up on the screen now and get right into it. The first thing we need to do is open the Landscape Builder window. To do this we click Window, then Landscape Builder, then Landscape Builder Editor, then drag the window to wherever we want it to be. This is the window that we can use to access the majority of features in Landscape Builder. In the Landscape Builder window, there are nine different tabs, which we can move between by clicking these buttons at the top. When you first open the window, it starts in the Landscape tab. This tab is mainly used for creating landscapes and changing terrain and scene settings, such as water and lighting. Right now, we just want to create a new landscape. So first we should choose a name for it. I'm just going to call it Demo Landscape. We can also modify the size of the landscape as well as the terrain settings. I'm going to leave all the settings at the default except for terrain height, which I'm going to change to 1000. Then we just click Generate Landscape. Automatically, this centers the scene view on our new landscape and moves us into the Topography tab. This tab is where we can generate the topography, or the height map if you prefer, of our landscape. To do this, Landscape Builder uses a system we call Topography Layers. In this system, the topography is built up as a number of layers added on top of each other. For instance, the first layer we add will generally want to be what we call a base layer. I can add this layer by clicking the plus button at the top. By default, the layer type will be Perlin Base which means that it is a base layer using Perlin noise as an input. The base layer is usually what will be used to create the underlying large scale features of your topography. In this example, I'm going to pick the planes base preset. There's a lot of other values you can tweak here, which you can find out more about by hovering over them or by consulting our detailed manual. But generally by starting with one of our presets, you can get a good first guess of what your settings should be. Before I generate this, to speed things up, I'm going to go to the Advanced tab and enable GPU Acceleration. And then I'm going to go back to the Topography tab and click Generate Height Map. The result is still pretty flat, but that's okay. I just want some basic undulating terrains to serve as a base. So now I'll go and add a second layer. This time I'm going to be adding some cliff-like formations in the center of the landscape. For this, I'm going to be using an image modifier layer. This allows me to use one of our default height map images to position a landform wherever I want it in the landscape. So here I'm going to choose the Mesas category and the Utah Strait Cliffs Formation. Then I'm going to enable the volume picker. This orange bit here, the volume picker, allows me to see what the landform is going to look like when I generate the height map. So I can move it, scale it, and rotate it using the default Unity tools. So I'm going to scale it up a fair bit, I'm going to rotate it at 45 degrees, and then I'm going to move it down somewhat. Then I'm going to enable use blending, uh, disable the volume picker again, and generate the height map. As you can see, we now have some cliff like features added to the middle of the landscape. Next, I'm going to add some small scale detail to the landscape using a detail layer. So I'll just hide these two layers, go and add a third layer, and then set the preset to default detail, and then click Generate Height Map. So now that we've got our topography done, we can move on to texturing our landscape. So to do this, we go to the Texturing tab. From here we can add and tweak textures with various texturing rules applied to them, or we can simply assign a texturing preset. So I'm just going to choose a preset, in this case the desert preset, then I'm going to click assign textures from preset, and then just click texture landscape. If I don't like the look of my landscape, I can simply choose another preset, for instance the Rocky Hills preset, click assign textures, and then just texture the landscape again. So now we can go and add some trees and grass. So just like the texturing, I'm just going to be choosing presets for this. For the trees, I'm going to choose the Fast Forest preset. Click Assign Trees from Preset. 
and click populate. And for the grass, I'm going to choose the savannah preset, sign the grass from preset, and click populate landscape with grass. And we're done. Now we can go into play mode and test our newly created landscape. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. This was just a brief introduction to the basic features and workflow of Landscape Builder, and we'll be releasing some more videos soon to cover these features and more in greater detail. If you have any questions, feel free to come talk to us on our forum or on our Discord channel. That's all for now. Thank you for watching.